quarter past five, okay. A bit extra time. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Anybody in a rush to get back to Dublin? Quarter past five, okay. Mm -hmm. I tell the rest. Lovely. I, I, is this all your group? Will I start or? I go on ahead. The ones that aren't here are just going wander. No so problem. Forget all. about them. They've got about you. here to Care Castle and my name is Hazel and I'll be your guide for roughly the next 20 minutes to half an hour and on the tour we're going to take the path of an attacker so what they were forced to meet as they tried to actually break down the castle walls inside here and um, but just a little background to the name of the castle or the Irish name of the castle it was Coshlan Cahar Gún Ishgig. now a bit of a mouthful but it translates into the stone fort of the fishes and where this name derived from was that this castle was built upon an earlier fort which existed back in 300 AD. Now to say from the 3rd century you can imagine that that has long since gone. So the oldest part now of our castle which remains is over 800 years old. So you are looking at a 13th century uh, medieval defensive castle and certainly one of the best preserved as well. Uh, the Ishkig part of that would have been the river shore and the Cahir was the old stone fort. It's even sometimes still pronounced as that today. Uh, but the river shore hundreds of years ago would have been three times wider than what you see out there now. So where you have the town, you once had all little islands to where people would have worked the land for the buckling of the castle inside. They then changed the width of the river and by that I mean they placed two man-made weirs like dams. So you've one at the footbridge of the car park and another one across the road. And what they helped to do was to channel the current so the flow of the river was going toward mills, which are ones right next to the castle. But first and foremost, it was the family's first line of defence. Their second line then was this lower wall here, or lower area, which is known as the Barbican. And you see lined up along the wall, the long straight slits or the arrow loops. But just below the arrow loops, there's a ledge. And that ledge once supported a wooden platform. So it enabled any archers then to be able to kneel down and be at the same level and then could use um, their arc of fire to attack upon the attackers. Now a skilled archer was able to fire anything from 10 to 12 arrows in only one minute. So they were highly trained and if that was necessary they were protecting a very powerful family inside but you can imagine the speed of grabbing the arrow and shooting it out. And um, normally from the opposite side of the wall like the barbican here the uh, arrow loops are narrow on the inside, they're splayed, so to give them the room to do, um, to, to have a look at the attackers, pardon me. Like even this one here, you see like you're on a distance view of the, the car park. So you can imagine how that stood to their advantage in times of attack as well, having that view upon the attackers. Have you been to other castles or is this your first one?
Now, you'll get to see the mechanism for this gate later when you explore inside the buildings. Uh, they either could have done it after the defenders by lifting a latch which drop the gate straight down, or in times of peace they could have actually used the chains and just brought it down slowly. Um, you can see for yourself, it doesn't look too inviting. Uh, the aim was to kill any attackers underneath it. Uh, they used it for the uh, Philip Braveheart, which was the only functioning gate in the country at the time. Uh, many of the scenes took place in Trim Castle, in North Dublin, and County Meath to Braveheart as well. But over that, then, you see a double machicolation, and alongside that was a round wooden tower. And when you go in there later on, there's actually a wooden trap door halfway in the tower. So, what's suggested is that the prisoners were lowered to the lower end, the bottom part of the tower, and the top part then would have been a guard room. And the name given to these towers were called Oubliettes. So sadly for the prisoners, they Now we don't have any records to say such and such a prisoner was made inside here. It really depended on the crime. Uh, but with the castle being solid rock, they were unable to tunnel down to have dungeons. So instead, these prisons were built instead. Now, before we go into our next stop, I'd like to show you a cannonball, which is still stuck in our tower. 1599, which is authentic to our castle since then. And if you take a look up between the window and the corner of the square tower, then in the opposite wall there's a shooting stick out, sticking out, you'll notice a small iron ball. So you're looking on this wall here, high up between the window and the wall of shoot. It's quite small, it was shot from a cauldron gun, uh, but that is still stuck there from 1599. And it was shot by the army by Robert Deverell, the second Earl of Essex, and he was ordered over here to Ireland by Queen Elizabeth I, and she had ordered Essex to go immediately up north in Ulster, where Hugh O'Neill was, the Earl of Tyrone, as he went, went against the Crown's authority on a few occasions. However, when Essex arrived in Dublin, he came prepared. He had his troops and, and his artillery, and he wanted to travel south. So in doing that, he was conquering castles on route up to the north. Thank you. 
Ay, mas malala. Ang bawal ang baba ba?